Hello. Today we will showcase a policy-based zone and zone alias naming in Sanna. Policy-based naming of zone and zone aliases in SANNAV is done by defining naming policies for fiber channel zones and zone aliases. The policy-based naming automates the process of generating the names for zones and zone aliases to ensure naming consistency. The figure on the right shows the naming scheme, which can include all or parts of the names of the fabric, host, storage, zone aliases, and also a free text. Similarly, the zone alias naming scheme shown on the right can include all or parts of the names of the fabric, host, storage, connected F port, switch, and WWN, and as well as a free text. The policy-based naming allows to generate names automatically when zone aliases are created, either single, or multiple in a bulk fashion. This educational video will walk you through the process of creating zones and zone alias naming policies and will show how it can be used while creating zones and zone aliases. We'll be using a setup with a dual fabric that is discovered in SunNav, and we have two hosts and two storage arrays connected attached to the fabric. The naming policy we'll make use of fabric, host, and storage names to generate the associated names. This demo focuses on a greenfield operation use case, and there is no zone configuration that exists in the fabric at all. In addition, we assume that the host and storage enclosures have been formed correctly. There is a separate video that explains how to form the storage and host enclosures properly in Sanna. This demo will show an end-to-end -end workflow starting from creation of zone aliases in bulk and then adding them to a new zone, then adding the zone to a new zone configuration that we will create, and finally activating them in the fabric to make it effective. On to the demo. So I have a SunNav system here. And as you can see, I have two fabrics and we have two hosts and two storage arrays. If we move to the inventory and we look at the host, you can see that we have two hosts and there is a total of 11 ports, four in the first host and seven in the second one. Similarly, if we move to the storage, you can see that we have two storage arrays, each with 16 ports. In today's demo, we will be using the storage array that starts with the name APM to zone the host ports. Take a look at the topology. And we open in our save topology, we open the SAN A and we show in browse. You can see that we have two hosts, each with two ports, connected to two storage arrays. This is the topology that we'll be using today. Now we need to show the zone alias and the zone name policies that we'll be using today. So if we navigate to zoning and if we move to the policy and we look at the system zoning policy, we can see that we have a preferred default zone type called peer zone. This means that any zone that's created by default will be a peer zone. A peer zone is a zone that can contain multiple initiators and multiple targets. And the targets in general are called principal members and the initiator are called peer members. The peer members never talk to each other. The peer members always talk to the principal members. You can also see that we have defined a zone naming policy. This is to name our zones. And the zone naming policy consists of all the characters of the fabric name, followed by a hyphen, followed by the name of the storage, all characters, followed by a hyphen, followed by a free text, which contains the name zone. And we're going to also add a sequence number to each zone that is created, which is a three digit number. And we're going to convert the zone name in all in uppercase. Similarly, you see that we have defined a zone alias naming policy in our context containing the last five characters of the fabric name, 
followed by the text host for our host boards, and then followed by the host name, all characters. And again, we add the sequence number of three digits at the end, and we convert everything in uppercase. So now we will create zone aliases in our Fabric A. To do so, we move to zone aliases, and we're going to go ahead, and we are already in the context of Fabric A. So we're going to create the zone aliases for our servers in bulk. So we go and create multiple, and we sort on type initiator. We click and then shift click to select all of these seven ports and add them to the right. Now, when I click next, you will see that it's going to pick up the policy that we created earlier for the zone aliases. And it's telling me I'm gonna create these zone aliases by concatenating last five characters of the fabric, followed by the word host and followed by all the character of the host name, adding a sequence number as I explained earlier. When we click next, we see that it's generated seven zone aliases. You can see one, two, three, four, five. The first five characters of the fabric host the host name. So I'm satisfied with this, so I click OK. So this is going to actually create the zone aliases in standard and push them also to the fabric. So now we're going to, again, create the zone aliases for the storage arrays. To do that, we're going to, again, select the plus and select multiple. And in this case, I want to create the zone aliases for the storage array that contains the name APM. And as you can see, we have eight ports. And when I add them here and click next, the same logic is going to show. But here, I'm going to need to replace the host by storage because I'm creating storage aliases. And the same logic will apply. And I need to also pick up the storage name instead of the host name. So when I do that, it's again uh, taking the first five characters followed by storage name and then the name of the storage APM and then a sequence number from one to eight since we have eight ports. Similarly, if I click OK here, it's going to go ahead and create these eight aliases in bulk in the fabric. And when it's done, the next thing we're going to do is create a zone configuration. As you can see, we have now created 15 zone aliases. We have seven zone aliases for our host server ports, and we have eight storage array aliases that have been created. The next thing we need to do now is to create the zone. To do so, we navigate to our zones. So now, we will be creating a peer zone connecting all ports from both the hosts, connect through the fabric to one of the storage enclosure, the one that has APM in its name. To do so, we click plus. And as you can see, by default, it picks up the zone type as peer zone because that was the policy defined peer zone as the default type from zone creation. So I'm not going to provide the name yet. And what I'm going to do is simply select the alias members. So we said that we are going to select the initiator ports, all the initiator ports, so seven of them. I add them as peer members. And now I need to add the storage ports. And now I have eight storage ports that I need to add. And here, since we're creating a peer zone, I need to indicate which are the principal members. So the storage arrays are typically the principal members. To mark them as principal, I click this icon for all of them. So here we have eight ports that are principal members. These are peer members. So this means that this host port will never talk to this host port, for example. But any of these host ports can talk to any of these principal members. So once I do that, it's going to tell me now everything is good. We have 15 members in the zone. And to define the zone name, I click on generate name. This will generate the name according to our policy, which is the fabric name, followed by a dash, and followed by the name of the storage, followed by the name zone, all in capital. When I click OK, this is going to, when I save it, this is going to save it in Sana, but also push it into the fabric. Now the zone has been created. The next thing we need to do is to, since this is a greenfield operation, we need to create a zone configuration and add the zone to it. 
If this was a brownfield operation, you would have the option to add the zone directly to the zone configuration. So I now move to the zone configuration. As you can see, we're still in fabric A. There's no zone configuration created, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to simply name it as fabric name, which is first five characters. I'm going to pick this as an example, and I'm going to call it config. And now I need to add the zones to the zone config. We, I'm just going to add the zone that we just created earlier, this one. And obviously it's a peer zone, as I explained. We add this zone. Now we're going to save the zone configuration. Usually when it's a brownfield operation, you could compare in here because it always adds it to the defined. But here, since I don't have any configuration at this point, I simply click OK. And now this is going to create the zone configuration and add the zone to the zone configuration. And as you can see, it's now created the zone configuration in a defined state. But this configuration is not active. So to activate it, you click on the details again, and you invoke the action to activate it. Activating the zone will make the zone configuration effective. So when I click this, that's exactly what it's going to tell me. When I click next, it's showing me the zone, this message for the first time because it's a greenfield operation. If it were a brownfield operation, this will not be shown and it will activate it immediately. But here, it's just an indication that there is no zone configuration. And now it's been successfully activated in the fabric. So when I close this, you can see now that the SAN A config zone configuration is effective and the defined configuration is an exact copy of the effective configuration, which means this gives you assurance that the two copies are identical. If we now move to the topology, and if we select the zone context, and we pick the zone that we just created, which is this one, I select the fabric, and if I select the zone in particular here, then you can see that we have the server here, with all the ports, you can see that we have virtual ports here, three. And if you look at it, we, we are also connecting to the storage, which is APM. So this is essentially a topology of the zone. Usually, if you have a zone with a lot of members, it can result in a pretty heavy topology. So this concludes the demonstration of how to do a complete workflow for creating zone aliases, zones, adding the zones to the zone config, and activating the zone configuration in a greenfield operation. Thank you.